questions I left you with last time. Um, what is what is the ideology? We've named it. Uh, it's a totalitarian Islam or, or uh, um, uh, you know, jihadists or Islamists. It, it, it has to have Islam in the name. It has to be related to Islam without lumping in all Muslims and the whole of the Islamic religion because that does not help you when it comes to actually identifying your enemies and, and, and crushing them. Second, second, now Islam is a philosophical enemy, but political enemy, you have to identify political entities. Who is ruled by this ideology? Who funds this ideology? Who promotes this ideology? Who inspires this ideology? Really, there are only two countries in the world who do this. Now there are other small ones, but two significant ones. that are the big players in this space. One is Iran. Iran is the largest fund of terrorism in the world. It is the inspiration politically for most Islamic terrorist ideologies. It, its revolution in 1979, the rise of Ayatollah Khomeini and the establishment of a Sharia law-based system theocracy in Iran inspired t uh, uh, groups from, from Northern Africa to Indonesia and Malaysia, inspired people everywhere. When you read the literature, the Islamist literature, what they write about themselves, 1979 plays a huge role because it proved to them that the West could be defeated. It proved to them that they could get rid of their secular dictators, and replace them with Sharia-based law. It proved to them that nobody would stop them. And the continuous existence of Iran as a theocracy proves to them every day that this is possible. It's possible to have a Sharia-based government, a theocracy, and for it to be, quote, successful. And they aspire to bring that ideology everywhere. Now, Iran is Shiite. And we're not going to get into the difference between Shia and Sunni. Look it up. Iran is Shiite, but they have never held back from supporting financially, ideologically, materially, spiritually, Sunni terrorist organizations. Whether their support for Hamas, which is primarily Sunni, whether their support for Al-Qaeda, which we know they were very supportive of pre-9-11 and post-9-11 and right now. The latest stories I'm reading about uh, Afghanistan is that Iran has become one of the main supporters of the Taliban in Afghanistan because they, they think that they can get along with the Taliban in the end of the day. They have the same basic ideology, Sharia, and, and the forcing of Sharia on the population rather than the regular, relatively, and this is very relatively, uh, secular regime in, in, uh, in uh, Kabul today. They also prefer the Taliban to ISIS. So they are supportive of the Taliban and fighting ISIS. One, one of the best things is when they start fighting among each other, but it doesn't happen often enough and we don't support it uh, vigorously enough. So they're supporting the Taliban, even though the Taliban are Sunni. So the separation of Sunni Shiite not as important as many might think, at least not in the grand scheme of things. And some local levels, like in Iraq, it's very important. But in the grand scheme, it doesn't matter. Iran is the inspiration, the funding, it's everything. As long as Iran is ruled as a theocracy, these terrorists will continue. So that's country number one. Country number two is Saudi Arabia. Yeah, a friend, Saudi Arabia. The country a president just visited, a country in which our president just danced with the sheiks who are on the side funding much of this terrorist activity. Now, maybe it's not the top of the royal family. Maybe it's only the middle of the royal family. Royal family is huge. Maybe it's just the charities. Maybe it's not official government policy, but there's no question whatsoever that Saudi Arabia is funding radical mosques, radical schools, madrasas all over the world in Wahhabi ideology, the ideology of, of, of raising weapons 
and and fighting the enemy in the West, fighting America, fighting. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the, if it turns out that the Sheik, the, who radicalized these young Moroccan men in Spain, and they were all radicalized by a particular Sheik, it appears, was funded ultimately by the Saudis or by some convoluted route was funded by the Saudis. That's, you know, they have the money. And, and they have a deal with the Wahhabis. You take care of the spiritual, leave us the rule. And now I say, okay, we'll take care of the spiritual. We'll export it all over the world. And they do. So this funding is everywhere. And of course, here's Saudi Arabia. Funding terrorism, there's no question elements within Saudi intelligence and Saudi war family were involved in 9-11. We know that from the redacted pages from the, from the House committee meetings. I, I, again, and yet they're our best friends. So what does that tell Muslims all over the world? It tells them the West is pathetic. It tells them the West is afraid. It tells them that, 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 that Saudi Arabia and Iran have, the, have, have control over the West, that the West won't challenge them, that it is, you can stand up to the West and survive and actually thrive and do well. It tells them they shouldn't be afraid of the West because the West is nothing. They are emboldened by our weakness. We are a paper tiger. And if you don't believe me, Read, read some of what Osama bin Laden was writing. And he was writing about the West's weakness and how he thought if, if he could have defeated, if he defeated the Soviet Union and Afghanistan, defeating America and the West would be easy because we are so weak. Now, it turned out it wasn't so easy. But that's what drove him, this belief, and it, it, a belief that comes from our appeasement. It's a belief because we won't name the enemy. It's a belief because we pretend that our enemy is our friend, Saudi Arabia. So what would I do? What would I do to Iran and Saudi Arabia? Well, you'll have to wait until after the break. Um, by the way, if you want in on the conversation, 888-900-3393, 888-900-3393. When we come back, I'll tell you what I would do with Iran and Saudi Arabia. Uh, how I would deal with them and how we could end this uh, this terrorist uh, disaster that is plaguing the uh, the West. All right, you're listening to Run Book Show on the Blaze Radio Network. We'll be right back. <laughs> This is the Yaron Brook Show. All right, you're listening to Yaron Brook Show, and and if you're enjoying the show, uh, I'm going to be on this week uh, for nine hours. Uh, I'm filling in for Mike uh, Apelka on the Blaze Radio Network on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday on theblaze.com/radio between nine to twelve uh, Pacific time, twelve to three. Uh, East Coast time. So I hope you'll join me. I hope, uh, I hope uh, y- you can uh, handle nine hours of the Iran Book Show uh, in, in one week, plus the two hours this today. That's 11 hours. That's crazy. All right, so we've identified the enemy. We found its financial source, fountainhead. We know where its ideas, the inspiration comes from. They come from two places, Iran and and Saudi Arabia, so what do you do? Well, you certainly don't cut deals with them. You certainly don't pretend that they're your friends. You identify them. You declare them as enemies. And in the case of Iran, you either, you either fund an internal revolution to overthrow the theocracy, or you go in there and you crush them. And you replace the regime there. And you don't pretend to bring them democracy. You know, if there is a pro, pro-freedom, real opposition there who will change Iran in fundamental ways, you hand it over to them. And if there isn't, I like to say you give them the infrastructure their philosophy deserves. And you leave them alone. I don't believe in sticking around and building democracies and, and all of that. But as long as the regime, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, theocracy in Iran exists 
we will continue to have terrorist activities all over the world. And not only that, there's no question in my mind that they are seeking an atomic bomb. They're looking at North Korea and they're saying, look, the United States is crippled by these guys. We need to have what they have. We need to have what they have. And we need a bomb. And they, they, they're working on it. They're working on it. Hush, hush. While, you know, uh, uh, inspectors go and they look and they look in the wrong places. And one day, just like with North Korea, we'll wake up and they're, they're, they're testing a bomb. And they will say, whoops, how did that happen? I mean, we had great inspections and we had sanctions. And how did that happen? It's going to happen. And then what do you do? Then replacing the regime becomes impossible. Or almost impossible. Now, so that's, so that's um, uh, Iran. If you do that properly to Iran, all you have to do is turn around to Saudi Arabia and say, hey, Saudis, you want that to happen to you? Okay, here's what you have to do to avoid it, royal family of Saudi Arabia. You have to stop funding any advocacy of Wahhabism Outside, there's no more funding of mosques, no more funding of madrasas. No money leaves Saudi Arabia in support of anything that looks even remotely like it might radicalize anybody. You just zero dollars out. You, you want to invest, you want to do this, fine. But you do not, do not fund the radicalization. You don't fund terrorist groups. And if you do, we can get a different royal family. You know, the only reason the Saud family rules uh, Saudi Arabia is because, uh, you know, that was the family the British decided on after World War I. They can be replaced. And, and neither Iran nor Saudi Arabia has even a fraction of a, of, of a military capability to touch us. Right? And, and, but we're doing the opposite, right? We're selling them weapons. 350 billion worth of weapons. And, and Obama just keeps, uh, Obama, because there's no difference, right? Trump keeps selling them more and more and more weapons. Right? So you got, you got to identify the enemy and destroy him, crush him. Now, once you do that, it will be like, the fall of the Berlin Wall, not, not quite. It'd be like the Soviet Union disappearing in terms of a funding source and in terms of spiritual inspiration. They will be shown that A, the West will stand for what it believes in, that it will fight, that they have no chance of winning because we have the firepower to eviscerate them. They will be shown that their pathetic leadership has no chance, no chance of standing up against the West. 